Contraception Part 1 Part 1 of this lecture series on contraception will cover the factors influencing the choice of contraception, the effectiveness of methods available, and focus on the non-oral methods of contraception available. Contraception is the deliberate use of artificial methods or other techniques to prevent pregnancy as a consequence of sexual intercourse. The ideal contraception should be effective and safe with minimal side effects. Ideally, it should be easily reversible by self with quick return of fertility. It should be convenient to use, non coitally related, and easily administered with minimal motivation and maintenance. Factors influencing the choice of contraception includes the reason for fertility control. Would it be devastating for the woman to conceive or is the aim to space out pregnancy? The reversibility of the method. Is she not likely to want to get pregnant ever again in the next five years or in a few months? The acceptability of the method. Some women do not want hormonal contraception at any cost. These concerns should then be explored and discussed. The woman's age, presence of medical conditions, and contraindications to the chosen method must be considered. The United Kingdom Medical Eligibility Criteria, UKMEC, classification published in 2006, is an essential resource to indicate which women are eligible for a particular method. Category 1 Condition for which there is no restriction of use. Category 2. Condition for which advantages of using method generally outweigh the theoretical or proven risk. Category 3. Condition where the theoretical or proven risks usually outweigh the advantages of using the method. Category 4. Condition which represents an unacceptable health risk if the contraceptive method is used. When comparing various methods of contraception, we look at their efficacy. A standard measure of contraceptive effectiveness is the Pearl Index, which is defined as the number of pregnancies per 100 women years in those at risk of pregnancy. One woman year is equal to 12 cycles. Contraception can be broadly classified into reversible methods, irreversible methods, and emergency contraception. Our lecture today will focus on non-oral methods of contraception, including natural family planning, barrel methods, contraceptive patch, injectables, implants, and intrauterine device and system. Natural family planning is also known as fertility awareness, and this is defined by WHO as the voluntary avoidance of intercourse by a couple during the fertile phase of the menstrual cycle in order to avoid a pregnancy. We shall briefly discuss four such methods. The cycle method calculates the likely fertile days in the cycle. The first fertile day is the shorter cycle minus 20. The last fertile day is the longer cycle minus 10. The method requires a significant period of sexual abstinence. The temperature method is based on the rise in basal body temperature of 0.2 to 0.4 degrees Celsius following ovulation when there is a rise in the progesterone levels. The fertile phase ends after three consecutive high temperatures are recorded. The cervical mucus method or Billings method is based on the Spinbachite phenomena where the cervical mucus is clear, slippery, and stretchy during the follicular phase of the cycle. The final day of the fertile mucus is considered to be the day when ovulation is most likely to occur. The cervical palpation method. Self-palpation of the cervix helps to detect the cervix during ovulation, where it reaches the peak height from the introitus with maximal softness, and the os admits a fingertip. An overview of non-oral methods and the efficacy of each method is listed in this table. It documents the rates of both perfect use, which is the failure rates for women when contraception is used every time they have sexual intercourse and used according to instructions every time, and typical use, which is the failure rates for women 
when contraception is not used every time they have sexual intercourse and or it is not used according to instructions every time. The Merrill methods of contraception has a failure rate of typical use that differs largely from that of perfect use. While methods such as implants and the intrauterine device or system have similar failure rates of typical and perfect use. Barrel methods provide a physical barrier which stops the sperm from getting into the vaginal or upper genital tract. This includes male and female condoms, cervical caps and diaphragms. These methods are immediately reversible. The male condom is a synthetic barrier applied to the entire shaft of penis with a reservoir at the tip to collect semen and prevent exchange of fluids between partners. It has a pole index of 2 to 15 per 100 women year. The female condom is a polyurethane sheath with rings at either end. It has a pole index of 5 to 21 per 100 women year. The advantages of the condom are that it only needs to be used during sexual intercourse, protects against most sexually transmitted infections, has no medical side effects unless allergic to latex, and is easily available. The disadvantages of the condom are that it interrupts coitus, is highly operator dependent, has a risk of rupture or slippage, and is unsuitable in those with latex allergy. Occlusive devices are available in a range of sizes and initially need to be fitted by trained personnel. They require a high degree of motivation for successful use, which is reflected in the varying rates of efficacy. The vaginal diaphragm is a circular spring covered with fine latex rubber applied to the upper vagina, with its ring behind the symphysis pubis and deep in the posterior fornix. It can be inserted several hours before intercourse and must be left in place for at least 6 hours after sexual intercourse. The cervical cap is much smaller than the diaphragm and it fits snugly onto the cervix by suction. Both methods have a pearl index of 6 to 16 per 100 women year. Women should be reaccessed for the size of the diaphragm or cap if they have gained or lost 3 kilograms in weight. Advantages of the diaphragm and cervical cap are that they are non-hormonal, more independent of intercourse than condoms, and provide some protection against sexually transmitted infections. These advantages include being less effective, requires forward planning and fitting, increased risk of urinary tract infection, candiditis, vaginal abrasions, and risk of incorrect fitting. Spermicides may be used in conjunction with barrel methods. The most common spermicide is nonoxinol 9. Studies have shown that nonoxinol 9 can cause vaginal irritation and ulceration and may increase the risk of HIV transmission. Contraceptive patch The currently available contraceptive patch is the ortho avril transdermal patch, which delivers 20 micrograms of EE and 150 microgram of morel egestromine per day. The patch is applied weekly for three weeks, followed by a patch-free week. It exerts its contraceptive effect through suppression of ovulation and secondary effects of cervical mucus and endometrial suppression. Advantages of the contraceptive patch include good compliance in women who use it and independence of intercourse. Disadvantages include detachment, which is rare, Increased nausea and breath tenderness compared to combined oral contraceptive use and breakthrough bleeding. The patch is rated Category 4 in presence of history of thromboembolytic, cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease. Contraceptive implants. Implanon is a progesterone only method that comprises of a non-biodegradable single rod about the size and shape of a matchstick that is inserted subdominally into the non-dominant upper arm. The rod contains 68 mg of ethyl nogestrol, which releases 30 to 40 micrograms daily over 3 years for which it is licensed. The implant is a long-acting method that is easily reversible. Injectable hormonal options include progesterone-only injectable depovilparer, which de delivers 150 
milligram dose of Nidoxy progesterone as big. It is widely available as a 12 weekly injection given into the gluteal, thigh, or deltoid muscle. It is highly effective and does not require daily compliance. Advantages of the implants and injectables are that they are very effective, independent of intercourse, can be used safely in breastfeeding, reduces the risk of functional ovarian cysts, and reduces the risk of endometrial cancer. Disadvantages include irregular bleeding, breast tenderness, weight gain, and acne. The mechanism of action is the suppression of the hypothalamo pituitary axis with inhibition of ovulation. Intrauterine device and system. The levonorgestrel intrauterine system, marketed as Mirena, is a T-shaped plastic device with a reservoir on the stem that releases 20 micrograms levonorgestrel per day and is licensed for use for 5 years. It exerts its contraceptive effect mainly via the release of progesterone into the endometrium, which induces endometrial changes that disrupt sperm transfer and impede fertilization and implantation. The local progesteronic effect on cervical mucus reduces sperm penetration. The system does not generally inhibit ovulation. Advantages of Mirano include being highly efficacious, independent of intercourse, decreases menstrual blood loss and reduces endometriosis-associated pain. Disadvantages include risk of uterine perforation at time of insertion, risk of expulsion, and pelvic infection. Early irregular bleeding is a common cause of complaint and is experienced in almost one-fifth of women during first month of use. At one year, the common pattern is aminoria or oligominoria. Although there is very little systemic release of levonorgestrel, some women experience transient progesteronic effects such as mood changes, headache, bloatedness, and breast tenderness. The copper intrauterine device prevents fertilization. The copper they contain has been found to be toxic to sperm and ova. The IUD also sets up an inflammatory reaction within the endometrium which inhibits implantation. It can provide protection from 3 to 10 years depending on the size of the device and its copper content. Advantages include being hormone-free, highly effective and independent of intercourse. It can be used as a form of emergency contraception up to 5 days after unprotected sexual intercourse and will prevent 99% of expected pregnancies. Disadvantages include risk of uterine perforation and risk of expulsion like the Mirena, heavy or prolonged menstrual bleeding, and risk of pelvic infection. This is the end of the VAP. Further reading references are stated.